Well, good evening, good evening. A little after nine o'clock. Uh, so I was just checking my Skype chat that we all talk into uh, to see if uh, everything was okay. And it looked like it possibly is, but we'll just crack on and see what happens uh, <laughs> as we do. Uh, with my abysmal broadband speed, I do apologise. Anyway, it is uh, Tuesday the 11th of February 2014. I almost said 13 then, I don't know why. Um, we're going to um, we're going to vent some steam or some vapour uh, in a little while because we're going to look at what's been going on in the Commons over the past 24, 48 hours. Uh, and um, we've got some other news stories and some bits of VT and hopefully it'll all gel together and I won't go over too much. Um, but all that is going to happen when I find my titles and I can't find my titles. There they are. Yes, they're going to happen after we've seen these. It's Vaporzine. Vaporzine is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e -liquid. Yes, good evening. It is nine o'clock and it is Tuesday uh, and um, I'm having a little bit of an issue, I think. Um, so just bear with me a second. I'm going to put on a little trailer for you uh, while I see if I can fix something. Uh, and uh, it's going to be this one. Okay, <laughs> we're back again, uh, and um, mm, my uh, my connection here uh, or somewhere is uh, seems to be a bit of an issue. Um, so uh, just bear with me a second. Hmm. Okay. Well, crack on. Um, and I'm going to put the first bit of VT on. And if you've been watching the news over the past 48 hours, you will know that. Yesterday in the House of Commons, they were debating the smoking of cigarettes in cars um, while you have children on board. Uh, and I've pulled together little bits of VT. Um, some of it is with uh, Lucinda Berger, or Berger, who's the shadow um, health minister for Labour. Um, have a little look at this, and then when I come back, um, we've got some more that I got from uh, BBC Parliament. Yes, interesting stuff. Watch this. Members across this House will be familiar with the words of the great Liberal philosopher John Stuart Mill. Mill prized liberty above all else, but even he accepted that a civilised society should exert influence over an individual in order to prevent harm to others. This is a simple and straightforward measure that would make a world of difference to hundreds of thousands of children right across our country, reducing the misery inflicted by passive smoking, saving millions of pounds for our, our NHS, and protecting children who do not have a choice and do not have a voice and who in 20 years' time, I'm sure, will wonder how this was ever allowed in the first place. I sincerely hope that members on all sides will support this measure today. Well, we know that education campaigns have been run in the past, 
Um, but we still have the situation in England where half a million, around half a million children every single week are subjected to potentially toxic levels of smoke as they travel in a car where an adult smokes. And that's our area of concern and what we're seeking to address today. Where are those figures coming from? Are you confident on those figures? We are confident on those figures. It's from the, um, the studies that have been done right across the board that show, as I said, 23, uh, the level of a, a cigarette smoke is 23 times, up to 23 times as toxic in the confines of a vehicle compared to in a room in a house. Now, um, I'm sure you're well aware of the, the accusations that are being levelled of, of, of a nanny state and interfering in people's uh, liberties and uh, intruding on their private space. How do you respond to those? Well, I, I listen to what the public have got to say. We know from YouGov polling that around 80% of the public um, support this measure and are very concerned about this happening. I also look at the facts, and again, this comes back to children, the fact that there are half a million children subjected to this every single week, and of which 300,000 children are having to go to their doctor because of the effects of passive smoke and the impact that has on their health over long term. That's what we're concerned about today. It's about an issue about protecting children, um, and that's why we're bringing forward the amendment to debate this later today. I suppose beyond the issue of protecting children from passive smoking, it's surprising that this ban isn't already in place just from the point of view of safety and that people aren't supposed to be using mobile phones in cars, for example, are they? So why should they be lighting up cigarettes and, and, and smoking cigarettes? Well, we're not talking about adults. Adults have a free choice about whether they smoke, but it is fair to say in other countries, and they do have a, a ban like this in place when there are children travelling in a car. And we want to learn from the experience of America, where certain states have this legislation. We want to look at Canada, um, again, and Australia, where they have states with this legislation, South Africa, for instance. We want to look at how they do it, look, learn from their experience, consult on how we might introduce measures, look at whether we might go down the civil route or down the criminal route, and actually learn from the experience of where it does work and where it might have an impact here in the UK. Um, very, very few people actually smoke in cars now and actually what's happening is culture's changing anyway. Parenting is changing. Parents today are not the same as parents of my generation or my parents' generation. You know, things are changing. Within this generation, people will not smoke in cars full stop. So basically, you know, the old saying, you take the sledgehammer to crack a nut. But this is not really about protecting children. This is about using children as human shields and exploiting other people's children to push through a political agenda, which is ultimately um, the eradication of tobacco by any means, even if it means criminalising consumers and actually preventing them from um, enjoying what is a legal product in their own property. First the car, of course, and then the home. And if it was just about children, then you know nobody can really argue with that. But of course it's not, because to enforce this, um, they'd have to make sure, you know, they'd have to ban it with all adults in cars, even when children are not present, because how would the police distinguish between, say, a 17-year-old in a car and an 18-year-old in a car as they're driving past at 70 miles an hour? So, you know, the, the only way the police would know is if they saw a cigarette in a glimpse. And so to do that, they'd have to ban it for everybody. That's well over the top. My home is my castle. You know, my car is my castle. And frankly, if you don't like smoking, fine. Don't get in my car. It's as simple as that in terms of civil liberties and how far the government encroaches on personal lives there's a line and frankly a car ban is that line you cannot go over it and and i do believe i honestly do believe that if the government does that people will ignore it because they've had enough you know they really have had enough of being attacked and you know you, you've got to say that i am not a slave i own my life i own my body this is my choice and the government has no right to tell me what to do Yes, so watch this space indeed. Uh, and watching those little bits of VT back, um, a few things uh, come to mind. Um, a, <laughs> if they're going to, if they're going to ban it, how the heck are they going to enforce it? If you're driving down the motorway doing 70 uh, and you're using a cigar like, how is a, a policeman who's doing 70 as well looking in your window going to see if that's different? Uh, and also, if this does go through, are we going to be next? Are the vapors then going to be next? Are they going to say, well, you can't vape in your car either? Or are they going to go along the lines of, if you're holding a fag in your hand, is that driving without due care and attention? In which case, are they going to do you for eating a Twix or a Mars bar, other chocolate bars and snacks? Oh, of course, available. Um, so, you know, it's the thin end of a wedge, isn't it? Where is it going to go? 
The other thing that I did notice is that uh, that lady can't roll a fag for toffee, can she? But there you go. <laughs> I just saw these misshapen things sticking into her holder there. Um, but it does raise a lot of questions. Uh, and I found a little bit from BBC Parliament today, which talks about yesterday uh, and has got some of the debate. Uh, and strangely enough, if you go to They Work For You and look on debates, you will find the, uh, the text from Hansard from yesterday. And it's interesting to note that uh, that offence of smoking in a private vehicle. In a private vehicle. Now, there's already a law about smoking in the workplace. Uh, and if you have a company vehicle, that technically is your workplace. So if you smoke while you're driving to work in a company car, you are effectively breaking the law. How many people do you see in company vans, company lorries, smoking? How many policemen have you seen smoking in their cars? I've seen at least one smoking in a police car. Uh, I did uh, a piece last year about Cambridgeshire Police that uh, we're going to introduce allowing um, policemen to use e-cigs when they didn't have anybody in the back. So uh, it's, it's a tough one, it's a tough one. Anyway, here is um, what happened in a little bit more detail uh, in Parliament yesterday. Now MPs have voted in favour of a ban on people smoking in cars carrying children by 376 votes to 107, a majority of 269. They agreed the move during a passionate debate in which the benefits to health were repeatedly underlined. Critics, though, argued that a ban could not in practice be enforced, but it was the principle that was being addressed here. The government's clear, and I think actually all members are clear, that children should not be exposed to the harm of secondhand smoke. Um, secondhand smoke can be particularly harmful to young children. We know that young people have very little choice uh, about being in places where they're exposed to smoke in many cases. And she gave her view of any ban. Um, in the event that legislation is to be brought in to stop smoking cars carrying children, uh, we would not, I think, or we should not measure success by the number of enforcement enforcement actions. We should measure success by the reduction in exposure to second-hand smoke. Um, the Government will listen, as I've said a number of times, very carefully to what Parliament has to say on the important principle as to whether the Government should have the power to legislate to prevent smoking in cars when children are present. We will then consider what needs to happen next, which is why, um, if uh, members will forgive me, I, I'm not able to talk in great detail on some of the points that they've asked me about, because that is the next stage once we have ex heard the will of Parliament expressed. I just wonder how she envisages it might be enforced. Are we going to have smoking police weaving in and out of the traffic and looking in car windows? But there must be a serious answer to this. How could it be enforced? Well, enforcement has been the subject of much of the debate in both houses, I think, over a number of years, and clearly the detail of that would be something that would be looked at in regulation if the House is minded to... Um, minded to give the government a steer on the principle of it, but it is not for today's debate, but I'm sure it will be, or at least it is not, it is not for me, no, no, it is not for me to comment on the detail of it, but I'm sure it will be explored during the debate that follows my speech. If we know, beyond doubt, that passive smoking in an enclosed space can do serious harm to a person's health, and that hundreds of thousands of children are being subjected to this in a car every single week. And if we know from experience of similar laws passed in this country and other countries that legislation can have a major impact in changing behaviour and improving public health, should we act and do something, or do we stand by and do nothing? Mr Deputy Speaker, we say we cannot afford not to act. Yeah. By that same token, would she concede, therefore, that we should criminalise pregnant women who smoke on the basis that their child is okay. in an even more confined okay. space than in a car? Yeah. I thank the Honourable Member for his intervention. We're obviously talking about a very specific measure today, and if he wishes to bring forward further measures, then I'm sure this House would like to debate them. I think the point that we're discussing today is about children who don't have a choice when they travel in a car. I uh, have no quibble at all with the uh, Honourable Lady opposite for Liverpool Wavertree. She represents the smug, patronising excesses of new Labour who think that uh, the only reason they've come into Parliament is to ban everybody else from doing all the things that they, they don't happen to like themselves. 
What perturbs me are the Conservative ministers who appear to have not grasped the concept, even though they claim to be Conservatives, that you can disapprove of something without actually banning it. Uh, and this is just yet another in the long line of triumphs for the nanny state. But if the Honourable Member for Shipley had been present at the time, he would have argued very strongly against compulsory seatbelts in cars. Of course he would have done. Of course he would have done. Because when I was listening him today, I heard the authentic voice of primitive Toryism. I certainly, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I don't work on the assumption, necessarily on the assumption, but whatever the Honourable Member for Shipley opposes, I should support. But nevertheless, usually that is the case. So yes, what do you think? A huge can of worms has been opened up there. And uh, Whip It Up said something rather poignant there in chat uh, as that was playing. What about if you're smoking in a car and you've got a pregnant woman sat next to you in the passenger seat? Is that gonna count as well? Uh, <laughs> I can just see, you know, all the, uh, all the issues of trying to actually enforce this uh, piece of ridiculousness. We all know that we shouldn't really smoke in front of kids. Um, and, you know, most people probably wouldn't smoke in the car with their kids either, or at least have the window open, um, which we know does lessen the, the effects, uh, as uh, has been mentioned quite often. And Dave said something in our Skype chat about uh, soft tops. <laughs> it's not enclosed, is it? Um, so, yes, this is going to drag on uh, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the smoking side of it because then it will more than likely affect the vaping side of it as well. Um, so, there you go. What I'll do um, is I've got the link to that Hansard um, briefing and I'll give that to one of the guys so they can post it in chat. Uh, and uh, when we come back, I've got some more stories to uh, go over with you. See you in two minutes. Vapacine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporscene on Vaportrails TV. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
and welcome back to part two. Yes, I've got no idea what my timings are like today. I'm probably going to be a little bit over um, because of the issue at the beginning of the show. Um, but we are going to crack on and carry on with what I've got. Um, I've got a couple more news stories here. I've got uh, this one. Yes, this is to do with the Advertising Standards Authority. Uh, and I found this on Grocer. Um, Nicolites were... Uh, their ad was banned by the ASA uh, and it was in fact this one um, where they said it kicks butt uh, and basically um, the kick butt campaign was too closely um, linked the Advertising Standards Authority thought um, to what Nicolites had put on their advertising so they have banned it yes and I've, there's lots if you google kick butt uh, there's obviously certain <laughs> certain results you're going to get, um, but a lot of them, uh, there's some stuff in America. There's also a kicks butt um, campaign which has got, uh, uh, which is linked to um, teenagers to, you know, get them to not take up smoking and to campaign against smoking. Uh, and I did find some BT, uh, which I'm not going to put on, it's about eight and a half minutes long. Um, but uh, yes, so they, uh, they thought they'd ban that one. Uh, and the other one I had was uh, this one, the Hartlepool Mail. And I saw this in a Twitter, in a, in a Twitter tweet um, from uh, Lorian, Cerulean C. Um, and uh, one of the local councils thought that uh, they needed to look at this a little bit closer. And I'm kind of scanning through so I can see at the same time because I've got, uh, I've got different screens up. Um, yes, yeah, so councillors have raised concerns over the long-term health impact of popular replacement cigarettes. Um, and Carol Johnson, Head of Health Improvement at Hartlepool Borough Council said, there is just no regulation. Yes, there is. Yes, there's lots of regulation. Um, what is it that Catherine said uh, last week on Daybreak? 23, 27 different um, regulatory laws, European ones, um, that have to be adhered to? Yes. Um, and what else did she say? Uh, surprised that the government allowing them to be sold because tablets and drugs always grew, go through tests and surveys first. Yes, well, it's not a tablet and it's not a drug. It's not a medicine. Not yet. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, let's have some comments. And we have some comment here from uh, Very Boring. Yes. As a user coming up to the three years, I feel I have to say... I have not even had one puff on a tobacco product in all that time. My health improved straight away and I continue to feel better in myself. And uh, our very own Kat also put a comment on there. Uh, and uh, Kat was a smoker for 45 years and has now given up for five years. Um, and cigarettes contain 4,000 chemicals, e-cigs contain less than a handful. Hmm. Go and have a look at that particular piece. Uh, you'll find it on uh, Twitter if you uh, search for Cerulean C's tweets uh, and you can get the link to that. Uh, and have a look in more detail. There's lots of other comments, but it w I'd be here half an hour just talking about that one particular subject. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's not good. Um, but, you know, we all know that what we use is far, far safer. And that is what they just will not grasp. Um, but we still have, obviously, a lot of work to do on that. Uh, and if I was to tell them anything, I'd tell them uh, this. Yes. One person dies every six seconds. 50% of smokers will die from a smoking related death. Um, I've yet to hear one piece of evidence that says that anyone has actually died from using an e-cigarette. Apart from that one that we know was linked to it in that uh, report a few weeks ago, uh, but there's no proof about that is the, uh, the old lipid pneumonia one. Um, but anyway, let's lighten it a little bit. And I'd like to give you this week's buzzword of the week, which I found <laughs> which I found on the Hayes Hour. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. You need to push it in slightly with your finger.
Buzzword of the week. We're Dev Dawn. <laughs> uh, dear, I was watching that earlier on. Uh, Dave was doing some test streaming and uh, I didn't catch last night's show, so I watched it in its entirety. And that particular section had me in stitches. <laughs> and if you don't know what uh, that is connected to, if you didn't see the haze hour from last night, get onto YouTube and watch it because A, it was a cracking show, and B, that particular comment was very funny. Anyway, let's move on because times are wasting. Uh, and um, we're going to go on to uh, a little update that I've did that I've did, that I did in the car um, in relation to the old aero tank that I looked at last week. Whew, here it is. Hello, hello, hello. It's me. It's a little vapor trail for you. I'm not really trailing because I'm parked up. Uh, and that is generally, I remember I used to do these ones where I was driving, um, but the camera wobbles around a bit and uh, it's the sound isn't great, so I tend to park up now before I do my little piece for you uh, and it makes it a bit easier. Uh, and I wanted really to follow up on last week when I showed you the aero tank um, because, as you know, I like to use a device for a little while before I say anything about it and then I like to continue to use it um, so I can see if it fails, if something else happens. Um, and what it's like with different juices because you can't always do that um, in the time frame that you have uh, to get stuff ready for the weekly shows um, so I like to mess around a bit and I've been using this um, constantly it's the only device I've been using um, I've been using it on the, the EVIC uh, and the SID as well as the VTR um, but I love my VTR so much it's n it's almost never out of my hands these days uh, apart from when I have to change a battery uh, and this is going yellow so uh, <laughs> I only put a battery in yesterday um, so I've been vaping hard um, but yes the aero tank um, I was quite impressed with it last week as you know um, and that has not changed one little bit with the pro tanks I was getting gurgling after a week this hasn't gurgled at all as you know, it's got a solid 510 connection at the bottom, so um, there's no juice that's going to get into the bottom and then get up into the uh, the mouthpiece, the air hole, if you like. Um, so, and I've finished all that bounty liquid, <laughs> which was just so nice, so nice. Um, and I'm going to have to buy some more. So uh, I didn't buy the first one, as you know, but I will be actually paying for some more. Um, because it is very nice, but I will get 24 instead of 18. Uh, this is um, something different. Mm. Yeah, this is the Caramel Cappuccino, um, which is more VG. And I've just been using it with the air quite open. I'm just going to tighten that back up again. So the, uh, the three air holes are about halfway um, covered now. Uh, and it's still providing me with a wonderful vaping experience. Mm. As you can see, there's plenty, plenty of vapour that comes off this thing. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it's like when I recoil it. Um, because when this particular um, atomizer head dies, I'm going to go in with a single coil, I think. Uh, and then um, I'll try a double coil as well because you know I've got the different wires uh, and you'll see a little bit later on um, I'm going to do a uh, an EVOD uh, nano coil and you'll see that a bit later on in the show um, with mixed results yeah um, <laughs> but I've left it as it was because uh, I'll tell you about that later um, back to the VTR and the uh, aero tank yes um, quite impressed with it I like the fact that it's Pyrex I like the fact that there's no gurgling and I like the fact that I will be able to rebuild the atomizer heads uh, and for such a cheap device that makes it so accessible to the people who don't want to spend hundreds of pounds um, on things like a scrape it's a bit more expensive um, because they can be a bit prohibitive if you're on a bit of a low budget um, so things like this that are £16-ish 
um, and the heads are cheap enough to just buy them and replace them um, but they're also easy enough once you get the hang of it to re-wick uh, and all the kind of EVOD re-wicking is virtually the same um, so once you get into that side of it it becomes even cheaper and you've got a device that will last and last and last unless you keep dropping it and I have dropped this a couple of times I have to say but it's been onto carpet um, so it hasn't caused a bit of an issue and it hasn't broken but I do know that Tim um, from RY4 Radio at Vapefest he brought a Pro Tank 2 there and he dropped it Oh, it might have been a mini pro tank actually and he dropped it hours later and uh, and broke the pyrex this is replaceable uh, if you do smash it you can always just get another one so from that side of things it's a very good device for somebody a very good atomizer clearizer tank whatever you want to call it it's a very good product for somebody who wants something refillable wants something rebuildable um, but doesn't really want to shell out the big bucks um, at the beginning so there you go that was me and the uh, the old um, aero tank from Kanga that I showed you last week. I'm liking it. Back to me in the studio. Yes, and it is back to me in the studio. And there's a question there from Whip. Um, what is the diameter of the ring around the tank on the VTR? I was searching around for a, a ruler. <laughs> I've got a little ruler, um, but I can't find it. So uh, I will try to find it during this next piece of VT uh, that I did mention there in the in the video uh, and I have to say I made up some juice yesterday some uh, hazelnut caramel dolce leche which is 90% VG uh, and I've got it in here now and it is just wicking fine it's perfectly fine hmm. and I have to say it tastes cracking <laughs> after one day um, so that's going to improve over the next couple of days and I think I shall make a larger bottle of it because it is very tasty. Anyway, I did mention about uh, re-wicking the uh, EVOD with a nano coil um, and I know I'm going to be over tonight but we had a bit of an issue at the beginning so I'm going to play this VT in uh, and then when we come back hopefully I'll give you an exact um, a measurement uh, on the diameter. <sighs> Enjoy this. A few weeks ago, we looked at different gauge wires. We looked at the, the 0.15 and 0.212 nichrome. Uh, we also looked at the 0.2 canthal and also this 0.28. And what I thought we'd do today is make a nano coil um, for an EVOD. Uh, and this is actually a new EVOD head. It's completely unused. But what I thought I'd do was we'd use this um, because as you start rebuilding them they get a bit bent uh, and the little silicon bungs in the end um, get a bit hot um, and I thought we'd just use a brand new one just to show you how it's all done um, and we'll leave this for one sec um, the first thing we're going to do is obviously build ourselves a coil and I've cut off a length of 0.28 well let's move that out of the way and we're going to wrap it around a, a 19 gauge hypo needle. Now as you can see I've blunted the end of this. Um, when I got them they were pretty much hypodermic needles um, and will give you a nasty little stab in the finger. Um, so I've taken off the end. You can use some sandpaper or an emery board or something similar just to rough the edge just to take off the, uh, the sharp bit otherwise uh, you can end up sticking yourself in the finger with it. Um, don't cut it off with clippers because you'll then damage the end and it won't slide on and slide off. The coil won't slide on and slide off um, the needle as it really should. Um, and there's different ways of doing this but I'll show you the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to leave a reasonably long tail to start off with uh, and I'm going to give this 10 wraps that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We want both the tails to be pointed in the same direction, obviously. So just give them a good tug. And then what we're going to need to do is to squish this all the way down. 
and the 0.08 is so good because it holds its shape when you muck about with it it's quite resilient uh, and there's two schools of thought here you can either leave it as it is like so and then when you take it off there you have your coil or what you can do is put it in a pair of tweezers and heat it and compress it a bit what I want to do is just take off a piece of this wire so it's the tails aren't as long so I'll just clip that off and get rid of that and then we're left with our two long tails which we will trim once they're in the actual device uh, and I've been musing around with different ways of doing this uh, and what I'm going to try today is a piece of cotton cotton wool which I've eked out so it's kind of like a sheet and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the coil itself so I'm just going to move these tails slightly apart so to speak and I'm going to wrap the cotton around the coil so what we're getting is we're getting the coil completely covered in cotton wool and hopefully this will wick quite nicely when it's all done okay so now what I'm going to do is just trim off the excess I'm going to tease it off and there we have it so we've got our coil wrapped in our cotton wool let's zoom in for you there you go so that's wrapped in cotton wool and we're going to keep the needle on this coil for now because we're going to use that to hold it in place whilst we put it in to the actual EVOD head yes so that was the first part uh, of the, uh, the EVOD nano coil uh, and I'll show you the second part next week because as you know I'm way over time I find my little ruler oh yes uh, and I've measured the internal diameter and it's about 21 millimeters uh, and someone else posted in chat that it's gone way past now so I'm afraid I didn't get the name um, but um, not many tanks will fit inside you do have the you do have the option of course of using the extension tube and um, but then this sticks out quite a bit when you do that so it doesn't look um, cracking I have to say if you're going to do that you might as well shove it on an evic uh, or a SID or something uh, or another tube mod um, but yes if you can find one um, like the uh, iClear 30s or the iClear 30s or the pro tanks they all fit in there quite nicely um, so there you go and I will show you what happened when I finish that next week um, okay just about finished now I think yes so don't forget um, VT uh, DE talk follows me uh, at uh, quarter two if you uh, speak German if you don't you can always carry on the fun seven days a week at RY4 radio um, tomorrow night it is team talk with the usual gang and then of course Thursday it's VT talk with Mr Dawn and Sav uh, plus guests maybe I don't know tune in and find out Sunday it's Dave's tackle box Monday it's back to Mr Dawn again with the haze hour with Keith and Kat I will see you next week um, and it's quite a special one next week because next Tuesday is my second anniversary of stopping smoking and starting vaping so I'm gonna have a little bit of fun next week I don't know what I'm gonna do yet because I'm going to Manchester tomorrow and Scotland on Thursday um, so uh, if I can pull something together um, before I come back next Tuesday I will so I'll see you all in tatty bye
Vape is proudly sponsored by Health Evape.